Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Bitcoin right now trading at 38,800. Uh, we still aren't seeing too much movement, whether it's to the upside or the downside for Bitcoin or um, for any other cryptocurrencies for that matter. Still seeing this sideways momentum. We did see Bitcoin break up to 41,200, at least on this exchange, but we are just still kind of waiting. Uh, XRP right now trading at about 85 cents. And you guys can see still that same sideways pattern here. Uh, not too much movement to the upside or to the downside, just kind of staying within this channel. Down here, volume uh, still quite low, so the trading volume, not too many buyers and sellers. Uh, trading XRP or other cryptocurrencies for that matter, no price movement, still grinding our way sideways. However, we are getting some big news that is definitely going to affect cryptocurrency prices moving forward, I think. And, uh, you know, although we aren't seeing it right now, it is possible that this could have an effect on uh, the perception of the cryptocurrency market moving forward. I saw this from Michael at Val5 Links. El Salvador's Bitcoin revolution hits a brick wall as the World Bank refuses to help with the technical infrastructure. So the World Bank has refused to assist El Salvador with integrating Bitcoin into its financial infrastructure. This coming from a Reuters report, the Central American country made history last week when it passed a bill. Uh, however, since then, uh, several authorities, including the IMF, had poured cold water over the idea. And now the World Bank is also shunning their Bitcoin plans. It's clear that global governments are not on board with this financial freedom. It's funny how they're framing it, uh, this being a cryptocurrency news outlet, CryptoSlate.com. They're framing it as the government wants to interfere fear with uh, El Salvador's freedom. So the World Bank said it would not help El Salvador's implementation of Bitcoin due to the environmental and transparency shortcomings. Uh, a World Bank spokesperson confirmed that the organization remains committed to supporting El Salvador in many ways for currency transparency and regulation, but that offer doesn't extend to assisting with Bitcoin implementation. We know governments are not interested in adopting Bitcoin. I think that this statement speaks loud and clear to that point. El Salvador being uh, the first country to want to implement Bitcoin on that grander scale nationally. And these organizations are coming out and saying, we're not helping you at all with the infrastructure. And so you're kind of on your own. What this says to me speaks volumes to companies like Ripple, who we know have been at meetings with the BIS, the IMF, the World Bank, so on and so forth. And so, uh, you know, that broader cryptocurrency adoption with companies that are looking to be transparent with regulators, that's where the future is. Uh, I also saw this from Michael at Val5 Links. With regards to a David Schwartz interview he did with Thinking Crypto, and they were talking about Amazon. David Schwartz told Thinking Crypto that the e-commerce giant, namely Amazon, required infrastructure to make this happen. And what he's talking about is the XRP Ledger's federated side chains. So here's a quote, Amazon could definitely, you know, they certainly have the infrastructure to make this happen. What we need to do is to create software that's clean and organized though, then I think it could be very competitive. Uh, the architect of the XRP Ledger says he would like to get to the point where it's very, very easy to build on top of the platform. So David Schwartz uh, just talking a little bit more about federated side chains and how companies like Amazon could indeed benefit from them. Uh, so that was just a statement from David Schwartz from that interview. Wanted to keep moving though, guys. We are seeing lots of innovation in the crypto space with regards to many nations, governments planning to integrate digital currencies in all different kinds of ways. It is huge to note that the World Bank does not want to support El Salvador's uh, quest to integrate Bitcoin. And yet on this end of the spectrum, this coming from Boncrypt XRP, central bankers talk down concerns over digital currency risks. This is Benoit Curé, head of the BIS Innovation Hub, and he said commercial lenders should look at CB digital money or central bank digital money as an opportunity that will enable them to offer new services to their customers. So this just coming out earlier today, central bankers sought to play down concerns that their efforts to develop digital currencies will take business away from the financial industry. And so Benoit Curé, head of the BIS, he said, commercial lenders should look at central bank digital money as an opportunity that will enable them to offer new services to their customers as part of a broader set of new technologies. Monetary authorities from Sweden to China are working on their own digital currencies as the dwindling use of notes and coins threaten to upend traditional payment methods. Meanwhile, the emergence of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin has added to the pressure on central banks to ensure they have a viable alternative before unregulated payment forms take over. So it's all almost like they uh, are kind of working up against Bitcoin being that predominant unregulated cryptocurrency that, uh, you know, now some countries like El Salvador are looking to adopt. But there is going to be a mainstream framework uh, and they are going to adopt CBDCs 
and uh, you know DLT technologies like RippleNet to help integrate the financial system. And so uh, you know it almost kind of feels like we're up against this thing, this battling out for cryptocurrency payment supremacy. And governments want to get on the right side of this. They want to be able to create CBDCs, regulate an infrastructure so that their people can use safely. Um, and so they are trying very very hard to promote their narrative, kind of talk down the whole Bitcoin thing. But in the meantime, though, I'm sure. There are a lot of banks that are kind of confused about this because uh, I think essentially, you know, when you hear Bitcoin, you hear cryptocurrencies, you hear digital currencies, CBDCs, there are a lot of companies and organizations that I think lump this all into one thing. And I think that the education still needs to be in place to help parse out those differences. So now Benoit Coré from the BIS playing down these concerns. And he says that this is actually going to enable uh, customers uh, be able to have new services and a broader set of new technologies. So looking to kind of quash those fears, we also have to remember Benoit Coré. And I don't know if you guys remember this back from January of 2020. 20 at the last World Economic Forum summit that happened before the pandemic. Listen to what he told Bloomberg News. What is the task of innovation at the BIS? So I'm, I'm very glad to be here with, with, with you today. Uh, innovation has been a, a theme in Davos for years, but what we're seeing this year uh, is a lot about innovation uh, and how innovation can uh, improve financial markets. And that discussion has started in the private sector, as it should. Innovation it starts from mm -hmm. the private sector, and it's now migrating to the public sector, which is new and exciting. And the BIS wants to be leading that discussion on how innovation can help improve the way we do reg regulation, and how innovation can help improve the way we do uh, monetary policy, and uh, even maybe the way we d issue money. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. This clip is about seven minutes long. I will link it in the description if you guys want to watch the entire interview. Benoit Coré uh, essentially talking to Bloomberg News about the innovation of cryptocurrencies. Uh, again, this was back from January of 2020, so before the pandemic, when this whole thing was just starting to get rolling. And, um, you know, he was saying private companies are going to be part of this, but then that's eventually going to extend to governments. And, uh, you know, essentially CBDCs are going to be the future. Fast forward a year and a half, and, uh, you know, some of these organizations still have having fears about this, but Benoit Coré really emphasizing the fact that this is going to strengthen the economy and not hinder it. So I thought that was really interesting. I also noted this, guys, from John Deaton. Word is getting out because XRP hodlers won't let it go. Corrupt officials messed with the wrong community. So... This is, this kind of has to do with the Ripple lawsuit. Well, actually it does have to do with the Ripple lawsuit. Getting Ripple and XRP that clarity it needs, at least in the United States, in order to keep moving forward. Well, Mark Levin just talked about this on his radio show, guys. Mark Levin just mentioned on his radio show that the SEC needs to be investigated. Mentioned he was going to look into it. And this is regarding the Ripple case, as per my mother, who listened on uh, June the 15th which was only a couple of days ago. So John Deaton retweeting out Queen Crypto's tweet here. And uh, I don't know Mark Levin. He is not a radio host in my neck of the woods, but apparently Mark Levin hosts a radio show on 77 Talk Radio, WABC. And so I was thinking, you know, how big is this market? I'm sure some of you guys might know who he is. This is apparently a New York area radio show. So this is a huge market. I don't know how big this guy is. If you guys are from the New York area and uh, have heard of Mark Levin, please do put it down in the comment section. And so the fact that he's going on his show and talking about the Ripple case, the SEC, perhaps needing to be investigated, this is great exposure for the XRP community. This is great exposure for uh, how cryptocurrency can and should be more widely uh, accepted in the United States. Hopefully we are going to see more of this, you know, getting that ball rolling, getting out the fact that, you know, the SEC, a corrupt organization, but I think more importantly, just getting uh, cryptocurrency clarity for the entire industry. It's got to start somewhere. And so I thought this was interesting. Thanks so much to John Deaton for posting that. And as XRP hodlers, guys, we have a lot to look forward to. I just caught this tweet thread from Rochelle Renee here on Twitter, I think as an XRP hodler. I'm about to be very well compensated for my faithful holding. Allow me to explain. The Ripple team seems to be deploying a long-term strategy that will catch most players by surprise. Ethereum and many other networks and their digital assets built an ecosystem that grew their value based on projects of other developers in their network. And honestly, it's done well for them. Now enter Flare Networks, which we know, guys, is going live either this month or next month. Flare Networks on the XRPL with XRP as its fuel, fast and lower costs. And developers will flood to this better network, driving XRP up, up, and away. I hold XRP and I will hold Flare Spark and all F assets. 
So some people down here chiming in, Bubba Jugs down here saying, yeah, FLR is going to be a game changer, and that's an understatement. I will be holding all F assets too, even if that means I have to buy Doge. The Flare Networks is really going to be a game changer. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people talking about the Flare Networks in the XRP community. A lot of research to suggest that it is going to be huge. The last piece to this, though, is that we need that clarity. I mean, yeah, Ripple can conduct business in other countries, but the United States is a big market. We can't ignore that. And so the clarity in the U.S. is really going to be that sticking point. So with regards to the lawsuit, Stefan Hubert mentions this, the SEC's request for additional time was approved, but most of the SEC's request for additional filings was denied. Ripple's request to deny the additional time was denied, but the request for additional filings was approved. So his train of thought goes as such. The SEC gains nothing from the additional time, but Ripple does. On the other hand, Ripple gains additional information, but loses a time and money due to delays. To me personally, this looks like a pretty darn good basis for a settlement. With the rulings, I get the feeling that Judge Netburn is getting tired of the case and is trying to lead them to a settlement for their own good and protection. So Stefan Hubert here, uh, you know, kind of, you know, thinking about what has been given to Ripple, what has been given to the SEC, and how these two things can and will benefit each party respectively. He also says that based on this information, you know, this does look like a prime recipe for a settlement. And so, you know, the question remains, will we get a settlement soon? It could happen tomorrow. It could happen in six months from now. We really just kind of don't know. We're at the mercy of the plaintiff and the defendant's lawyers uh, and how they see the case going. So, you know, I, I hope you guys have your stacks of XRP all stockpiled up because once we get this news, I think it's going to be too late. I think that the price will definitely rally, whether that's just going to be from FOMO. I mean, they could, and I mean, I don't know if this is going to happen. I think the Flare Networks is going to launch regardless, but let's say it coincides with the Flare Networks launch. I mean, it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen for sure, but it certainly is a possibility. And did you ever think what could happen if Ripple loses the lawsuit? Well, I mean, an overwhelming loss, I don't think that would be so good, but you know, these lawsuits are divided up into certain sections. And so there's so much going on, so many moving parts. And this is why we need the lawyers to kind of break it down for us lay people. Well, I saw this guy's from Michael at Val5 links here on Twitter. With this motion granted, Ripple will add documents that sales of XRP occurred outside the USA. Everything outside the USA, the SEC has no jurisdiction over. This helps this part of the case to get dismissed. And so now there's something suggesting that if they can prove that the majority of sales happened outside the USA, this could be really, really beneficial for Ripple's side of the case. So this is from AMB Crypto. So I just did kind of outline the details on that. I'm going to start this article right here. As Ripple sought details from foreign exchanges over XRP investors to cement their position, Interhomes Online stated, this helps the personal case from the SEC against Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse. With this motion granted, Ripple will add documents that sales of XRP occurred outside the USA. Everything outside the USA, the SEC has no jurisdiction over. This helps this part of the case get dismissed. This could work in Ripple's favor if it can prove that over 90% of the XRP was sold outside the USA and basically away from the SEC's administration. However, this evidence can only be used in case of a trial. Note that too. If they do get this evidence, they can only use it in the case of a trial. And so if the SEC realizes that they do have uh, proof to suggest that 90% of XRP sales happened outside the US, do you think that the SEC is going to want to wait and go to trial? That's just another argument that a settlement could happen quicker. Down here, according to this Twitter user, it's just in case and no further proof the SEC's incompetence with the case to begin with. But despite booking several wins in this consistent back and forth over the past few months, it is, however, still likely that Ripple may lose the suit. Now, this is what Jesse Hines says, guys. According to attorney Jesse Hines, such a loss could still be an overall win for Ripple in the crypto space. Jesse Hines says this. So, a result of this lawsuit could be learning that while Ripple sales are investment contracts, secondary sales are not, meaning that exchanges will and can relist XRP. Then Ripple will just continue selling outside of the US and everything will resume as normal. 
If XRP investors were majorly outside the United States, Ripple could continue to function from the other side of the border. In such a case, it may have to find a solution for cross-border payments if they exclude the USD and the US corridor. So note what Jesse Hines is saying here. I brought up the tweet in a response to Dennis Boyle's tweet. How would Ripple losing the lawsuit be good for them? Primary sales would be considered investment contracts, but secondary sales over exchanges would not, meaning that exchanges could and will likely relist XRP. So very positive news, you know, even if the lawsuit doesn't turn out completely how Ripple wants it to, there is still a silver lining that we can look forward to. And I mean, the SEC, I think after this, the SEC can't go on like this forever. Uh, I think they will be exposed eventually, uh, especially once we get the verdict of this case. I think once we get this verdict, there might eventually be an investigation conducted on the SEC before they can bring any other cryptocurrency company or any company for that matter, uh, you know, into court again resolving this clear corruption that we've been witnessing. But you know, central banks around the world still adopting the private and public sector as per Benoit Curé, still a strong force behind a cryptocurrency centric financial future. And now that we're seeing the World Bank saying no to Bitcoin, this makes it very clear to me that the companies who want to and have been transparent with governments will be the ones to succeed. That's just my opinion, but I wanna hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.